So my central premise and my central concern is that the profession of investing, the profession that is connected to the world we actually live in and helping to create and nurture what we want to see happen, is in danger of being overwhelmed by a more separate, more synthetic kind of version of finance. And surprisingly, the tools that I found to be most helpful in bridging this gap are the tools that we find in the natural world. So one of the biggest challenges I see is that a lot of our modern financial tools are rooted in neoclassical economics, as you might expect. And one of the many challenges that comes along with this connection is what I call the challenge of ceteris paribus. Uh, everyone who's taken Econ 101 knows that the very first day you learn this phrase, ceteris paribus, all else equal. And most of the analysis that we do from there on out includes this assumption, all else equal. And what that does is it creates this closed loop system where it's, it's sort of a zero sum game. For me to win, you have to lose in that kind of system. It's really helpful analytically. It makes the math much easier, uh, but it's limited in this really important way. And the primary limitation is that ceteris paribus doesn't actually exist in the world we live in. <laughs> Whenever we have an action in the world, there are many, many reactions and responses to that, some of which are very hard to model. What is really great about using biomimicry and integrating it into the investment process is it gets us closer to this world that we actually live in. And if you combine it with the tools that we use traditionally, you have a much more complete way to think about investing. Right, so thinking about natural systems and biomimicry and how we can integrate it into investing, there is definitely a philosophy there, but perhaps more important than that, it gives us a different set of tools to use when we're thinking about investing. So rather than throwing away everything we already use, this is, this is extending our toolkit, if you will. Uh, it gives us tools that allow us to better deal with situations where they require adaptability, flexibility, resilience, as opposed to those zero-sum situations where we actually can analyze them in a very small box. So you put the two together and you're really pretty well equipped. Can you give an example? Sure. So the easiest and most dramatic example is the mortgage market in the United States and the 2008 crash. What started as a very risky situation, one that you actually could model with those conventional tools, was limited to the mortgage market itself. And yet, partly because we created so much of these synthetic securities that were built upon the real assets, the problem kind of mushroomed and actually it shifted from being something that was modelable, something that was risky, into the realm of something that was not modelable, the realm of uncertainty. And that's the kind of realm where natural systems give us much better analogies. They help you think about adaptation, limits to systems, optimizing versus maximizing, a very different, much more creative way of thinking about a central challenge like that. In Holland we have uh, very big pension funds and they work with the United Nations principle of responsible investments. What's the difference? So the UNPRI has been a terrific uh, starting ground for a lot of large institutions to really start to think in a more integrated way. It's getting much closer to a natural systems or systems thinking kind of approach to investing, recognizing that the returns and the risks and the costs of investing are not solely financial and they're definitely not solely short term and financial, which is where most of our conventional tools point us. So that's a great starting point. If you continue down the path of the UNPRI, you eventually come to something that looks much more like biomimicry, much more like natural systems work. You're thinking about the long term, you're thinking about many different dimensions, and perhaps most importantly, instead of thinking of individual investments and the costs and benefits associated with them, you start to see the entire system point of view and uh, you can really account for things in a much more complete way. What do you think um, how your philosophy will work out in, let's say, 10 years? It's good you said 10 years because that is probably the minimum time frame <laughs> to start to think about things in this more complete way. And that's really one of the biggest challenges. So far, um, the results of early research we've done, the results of early investments that I've made personally are terrific. And yet, who cares? You know, we're really just a few years into this, this experiment, at least the one that I'm doing. Um, 10 years and beyond, I think you'll be able to measure not only financial returns, but social returns, environmental returns, and also the costs and the risks in a much more effective way. And I can't wait to see what we find. <laughs> <laughs>